all of his co-workers were gone, what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. So what happens if I listen to him for the first option and then start not listening to him? Huh? What happens then? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Throw something in the idea bin. More bin. Trash cans. Renaming of the idea can. Firing of me. Oh, interesting. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and Man. wait for you to finish whatever it is. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs That's to no his boss's office. That's no fun to be your dad. Go downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be okay, fired okay. for that. 11, and in such a competitive 12. economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Oh, All of my co-workers I? blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. They are. Am I going easier. in circles? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, nice. he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Okay. And he thought Good. to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Nice. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. Ah. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Yeah, why is that? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. It is strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Weird. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Uh. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Oh, After man. all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back. Did he? The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Okay. 
Okay. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife. Oh, my wife. My job. I'm married. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. Okay. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am oh, I? Who am I? And everything went black. Um, this what? is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, oh boy. and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Oh. Although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This, much this is a story knew. about a woman named Everybody Mariella. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. Good. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. That's not nice. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career oh. and by extension the rest of her life she had okay, no then. time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring you think stanley down had a body. few too many few too many what and then she turned and ran yes the end is never the end it's never the end it's never the end all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. Let's see what else we can do from here. I'm gonna go to the... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, well, we'll, we'll go left. What's that? Yeah, that was the first one I did. Let's get it done. First one I did. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay. <gasps> what? He blocked off the broom closet. Oh, hi, cuz. Thank you for the tier three. Room closet ending's my favorite ending. Did you get the broom closet ending? Coming to a staircase, it's my Stanley favorite. walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, so we'll go to the boss's office. Actually, Let's go to the bathroom. To be rich, is it a crime to commit crimes? Isn't it rich? What a life it would be to have to. Very nice bathroom. Okay. I know, right? I don't know where I'm going now, but I'm going somewhere.
check outside. Check outside so I can answer your uncle. He wants to know if stuff has arrived. Go look. And if there's nothing outside, maybe go check the mail. strategy? Poor panda! Is that the parcel locker? Alright. You might have to go check the mail, kiddo. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. Nope. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he yes. relaxed right for a there. few moments with some calming New Age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay. All the way at the bottom underneath everything. Feel all down along the bottom of both. There's two pockets on the... No, big pocket. Bring it here. Sheesh. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Nope. I'm out of here. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, yes, Stanley would the little meet his gold death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nope. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward. Yes. And willingly confront his death. That is correct. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Oh? Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Okay. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. Why is my narrator instantly. now a female? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office yes. as alive as ever. Exactly. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see oh. now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Was I? Filing cabinets. Office computers. Ooh. Oh, whoops, no, turn it back. Out. The office. Buttons out. 
Ooh, I like that one. That one's fun. Credits? Take it all in. Ooh, Kevin Brighting. He's the narrator. I get to call him Kevin the whole time. Maintenance room. Ultra deluxe announcements. Ooh, ultra deluxe. Oh, I wanted to go near the war zone. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build the game that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. Aw, that would have been a fun thing to do. Narrator emails. Stanley Parable have infinite quests and many endings. Stanley Parable is really gonna let me go shopping. I hope it will have a fine selection of desert books. Uh, how do you make a JRPG? How do you make the worst game ever? What is the difference between a duck? Lounge. Apartment timer. Ending model? Game is now paused. Escape menu. Sending. Sending levers. Trailers. I'm gonna set these aside for right now. I will take care of that in a little bit. Um, no, I don't. I don't seem to have the package. Is that the parcel locker? Is that maybe at the post office meeting room? And? Maintenance layout. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. They do? How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? Um... No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Zoe, was there a key? in the mailbox you, you need to use the key that's in the mailbox to open whatever box it Amy can you put a shirt on and go do the mail it might be Chop Chop's gonna go check all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean Stanley decided to go to the meeting room perhaps he had simply missed a memo Okay, so I did the escape. 
Um. When Stanley came to a set of two open nope. doors, he had this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Sure. Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Not taking that door. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Yeah? Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful.